All right, here we go. Overdrive off and running. TSN 1050 on the TSN app, your home smart speaker, and up on TSN 4. Brian Hayes, Yo Dog, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. What's up? What's up? How are we doing? I have some words of advice for some people out there. Oh, yeah. Okay. We talked about Morgan Riley yesterday, and then these turkeys write in and they say, Take a look at the stats, overdrive panel. He's on the ice for five-on-five slot shots more than against. Stop with that garbage. You cannot insult our intelligence. We're experts. (laughs) I'm not kidding. (laughs) We're experts. We're experts. We're not making... Dude, How dare you? we're not making this crap up. And if you want to say, like a scout would, that you watched him the last five games in the press box or you've been following him for a month and you think he's played out se- exceptional or he's tailed off, fine. I could maybe live with that. But if you're going to just go with that stupid comment about look at the five-on-five slot shots he's on for more against – that doesn't mean anything about somebody's performance. If me and Hayes are playing a golf match and we're dummying the other two guys we're playing against, and I'm five under on my own ball, Hayes isn't allowed to say he's playing it great if, he, if he's slashing it around the woods. Okay? That's it. His Do expect- not stop. <laughs> His expected par is what, though? That's the thing. Well, like- that's it, man. Like, there is, we need like a whole different universe that lives in the expected world, right? Like the expected yeah. cup and expected hey, parade My route. point is you just like can't go idea. off a stupid sheet. If that's the case, take the panel away, take all panels away, and just show computer printouts during intermission. Like, Well, don't give them any ideas because that, that might actually yeah. end up happening someday. Go ahead. But, go ahead. Um, yeah, like that was, I believe, a kind of a throwaway comment within confirm or deny where we, I brought up Morgan Riley and I was saying how we were at the game the night before. Yeah. And I, I believe I prefaced it by saying this is not a reflection on the first three games of the season. We were speaking in terms of the big picture, how great he was in the playoffs, like dominant, yes. the best Maple Leaf, in my opinion, through collectively the nine playoff games they played last year or 11 playoff games they played last year. I thought he was great. And I just said, and oh, you agreed, Noodles, you agreed. It wasn't a direct breakdown of shift per shift or anything. It was throughout the regular season with a weaker defense core. He needs to play closer to that level. He's not going to play like it all the time. It's impossible to completely replicate playoff hockey over 82 regular season games. No kidding. It's like what, what I always you say. want is you a can't little bit. Treat it like a game seven when it's not a game seven. You right, obviously right. can't do that. But, you can't treat a regular season game like a playoff game. But he can be better than he has been the last couple of regular seasons, and he has right. to be. Right. That's and it. You you like what playoff Morgan Riley brought to the table? Yes. And. Yeah. If that was his body of work, and I've told these turkeys numerous times what the breakdown is of the regular season. 70 games, you bring your A stuff. And, that, and for Morgan Riley, his A stuff, that, 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 that's what you like, the playoff Morgan Riley. Absolutely. So 70 games, bring that. Five of them, you're going to stink the joint out where you throw them away and you say, I sucked. Five of them, you're just okay. There's your 82-game breakdown. Stop with these stat stuff and saying that the guy was on the ice for expected slot shots against or wow, for. Man. It's I, nonsense. It's just don't watch the games then. I'm not going to watch. I'm not going to be an expert anymore. That's what I'm going to wow, do. Man. I'm just going to look at the numbers. I, I, I don't know why you're giving that so much oxygen. You know, at the end of the day, everyone's allowed their opinion. That was our three opinion on the fly. And, and you know what? If I had to do a do-over... I would probably say there's more players that I liked other than just Austin Matthews and William Nylander. But for the sake of what we did for that segment, I could agree with you because you're right. Like, I think there was other people that were saying, well, I like Klingberg. Well, John Tavares has looked pretty damn good. Yeah, he's pretty good. Sure. You know, at the end, if we wanted to go through the whole roster and go yes or no, then that was a full segment. That's a 30-minute segment of us breaking down. This was... One was it confirmed? I don't remember. Confirm or deny. I believe comment. the question was who has exceeded their expectations. 
And right. like that would be Matthews, Nylander, which is very difficult to do. Tavares has been good. I think sure. the Riley and Brody pairing has been has been good. I don't think it's been outstanding, but I think it's been good. And yes, there are probably other players that deeper in the lineup you can say that's probably a, about what I would expect. But in terms of exceeding expectations, in terms of of sticking out through three games, I do think it's Matthews, Nylander, and then you start the discussion with everyone else. That would include Tavares, Riley, Brody, etc. Um, but you know, it's it, listen. There's, it's three games into the season. <laughs> they're they're two and one. I know. <laughs> they, they but got you know what? I just I just night. find it weird how somebody can say <laughs> your assessment of that is wait, take a like take a better look at yourselves was the comment and I didn't the see actual. That. Not, it, have I it, muted that? I must have muted, muted a bunch that of people. person. And at the end of the day, why? Like, what do we care? Like, it's our opinion. Like, everyone else is allowed their opinion. This is the tweet. It, Hayes, you're CC'd in it. It says, the TSN Overdrive <laughs> staff should take a closer look at what Morgan, in quotations, Mo Daddy Riley needs Ooh. to up his game or not before spouting falsehoods. Uh-oh. Well, okay, spouting giving... falsehoods. I what is this guy talking about? <laughs> I can't believe this is on the top of your mind yeah. at four o'clock. That means exactly. you, for 21 hours, you've been yeah. stewing about an anonymous Twitter account. <laughs> and their comments on are confirm or deny. <laughs> like, Hayes, I know confirm you don't or deny know is how a much... great segment, but come on. I was pulling up to the fourth green today, and I was thinking about chipping in, and I just looked on the Twitter machine, and I saw this loser's comment, and I'm like, this is bothering me. It bothered me all right. day. That and I, I, I missed the ch – I didn't – I made par. I didn't chip in like I wanted to, but it bothered me and rattled me. Yeah. Well, you should have been <laughs> rattled that you missed the green and rag down. That's a par three. I know that. I know that hole. That fourth You are hole. right. You are right. That it's means... ridiculous to even be chipping. Yes. You should be greens and reg this point of the season. You really should wow. be. But it's all good. You know what? Like, that's – I agree. Like, why why allow that to even enter into your world? Like, it just – it it you, the world is full of so much garbage. Like, why is that that where that's, – that's hit the nerve? Like, it just – let it go because everyone's going to have – there are people – we have no idea who that person is. They could be the biggest super fan, blue blood, that it's like, it doesn't matter. Everyone's been great, happy. Like, you have no idea. At the end of the day, that's that person's opinion. Go ahead. We have ours. It's all exactly. good. Exactly. There's it's nothing all wrong good. with that. The I know, but don't, don't try to call us out like we're dummies. We're experts. Uh, okay. <laughs> calling us we're out. Experts. Put it this way. Calling us out where? To who? To himself and he, I don't know followers? what to their Who little their stats nation. I don't know what they are. It's like a, what, it's, it's okay. Hayes always calls it a secret society or there's yeah. these secret societies out there. And I think they meet they meet in dark alleys in underground buildings and they talk about how dumb we are and that we don't know what we're talking about. No, they if don't. You, because they... If you want to sit down and come to TSN and have a coffee with us and do a video presentation, a breakdown of different plays they're doing, positive or negative, I could look and, and say, I was dead wrong on that guy. You know what it could be? It could be Jonas's burner account. Exactly. You know, it could be the cronies. It could it's be fertile, one of the cronies. Or... That you know. they they have burner accounts and it's Jonas and it could be Myrtle it could it could be anyone you no, know in, in that you know why they respect the our opinions they might not agree with us they are stat nerds but they respect our opinions well that's they fine do. but, but this, it, this, I'm not I don't know if this guy respects or doesn't respect okay, he may just disagree I, with one okay, comment yeah, I just exactly. needed to get that off my chest and I can okay. I can have fun I, like the rest you're like of the Rick Tockett Rick like yeah, the, the Canucks <laughs> are two and one and Rick Tockett hates his team already Could you know you? why he hates I'll tell them. you why he hates that team I played for a coach Craig Hartsburg and we went up to Sault Ste. Marie where Craig Hartsburg was a legend in junior and he was our coach and we laid an egg and he smashed five sticks against the center beam in the dressing room and said, how dare you guys embarrass me like that? Cause he was a legend up there and Rick Tockett going back to Philly. He wants to show off his shiny new toy and you, and you put up a goose egg. That's why he was pissed off selfishly. Obviously as a coach, he wants to win, but Rick Tockett, the Philadelphia flyer and you lay an egg like that. That's embarrassing. Yeah. Well, that is, that's his backyard. That's where he was a broad street bully. And he, 
he made a point. Like he goes, I don't really want to say this, but the, he used the word soft. Yeah, he couldn't that wait. Bought, man. You know, he, like that, that that was oh. like under the number. I had him at nine and a half games before he he selectively used the term soft. Because remember when but he was I love an analyst, how he said it, Hazy. I don't like to use the term, okay, but we, I'm going. to. We have it. Let's play yeah. it. Here's here's Rick talking again. The Canucks are two and one. They beat the Edmonton Oilers twice, including eight one on opening night. And here's what Rick Tockett had to say about his two and one team after losing to Philly last night. We just got some guys. They, you know, whew, they got they, they better pick it up. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I saw a lot of you know. I don't like to use the word soft, but I, I didn't see guys competing <laughs> at all, um, and that's alarming. But saying that, you know, you win two games. We, you know, we said we didn't. Let's not get too high. It's the same thing, you know, obviously it's a bad effort. Let's not get too low, but we got to obviously, we got to go to the drawing board with some guys here. They got to pick it up. Boy, like, uh, <laughs> can't throw goose eggs again. Some guys. Yeah, he's that, so mad. He's really mad. And Dude, actually, that, 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 that means there's some guys, like probably maybe second, third line guys, because fourth line guys, you're generally going to get what you're going to get. There are guys in the middle of that lineup somewhere that he hates. Yeah. Yes, and he didn't even like them probably when they were winning 8-1. There was still yes. something he saw that he didn't like. And um, I think that's a great point. That is an expert analysis that he's back in Philly and he would Rick's take that expert? personally. Rick is an expert. And I will yes. say this. Rick does not hate using the term soft. We used to have him all the time on all the time when he was with TNT. <laughs> Every ass. time he was on, he used the word soft to oh, yeah. and he attributed it to somebody, right? Or too some bad. team. Ah, yeah, yeah. I, I hate to use this. He'd always say that to you. I hate to use this term. <laughs> like, Rick, you're gonna use it, man. Just just drop it. Like, just say yeah. soft. Generally about his former teams, you know, you talk about Arizona or you talk about specific players. Um, but you know, he was the antithesis of that term. Like he was as tough as nails worked his ass off, was a great player. And I actually kind of appreciate that he would take it personally like that. Like, these are people, to get back to the initial comments of the program here about how we're dealing with the human element, Rick Tockett is, he's not starting from scratch because he got there, you know, what did he coach, 30 games last year, whatever yeah. it was, 20, 25 games. But really, it's a clean slate. When he got there, it was over, the season was done, they're two and one, and he's already showing, like, this is who he is. This is how yeah. he, he coaches like he plays. He's an emotional guy. He takes something personal. He expects his team to understand his history and what he expects. And um, it's also a, a sign, I think, of a team that realizes they don't have room to mess around. You yep, know, like Vancouver right. is not in a position where they can say, well, last year we started this way and we stormed back and made the playoffs. They haven't made the playoffs in years. Yeah. And what so. he's trying to say, Hazy, is this team right here, if you're not going to win the game, and Paul Maurice would always kind of emphasize this, where he would be like, guys, you cannot throw your sticks out there or play at the end of your sticks where it would just be like, ah, we'll see what happens. Like, if you're going to go down under Rick Tockett, of all people, mm -hmm. in Philadelphia or anywhere, you got if you don't have your A stuff, you got to scratch and claw and fight to try to get something. Yeah. Like, you know, the Vegas Golden Knights or the, Bru or the Bruins last year, it's like if it was 2 nothing going into the third, like they would crank it up and throw everything at them and say, this is what we're going to – we're going to try to get something in overtime. We're going to try to get to overtime to get something out of this. There's just no lay down and die. Because when you have a bunch of lay down and dies, you're just it, – it says a lot about your team. And like you said, Bri – one game, man. It's just they're two and one. Yeah. And, and he, Rick's I, not going to freak out and make too much of it, or nor should anybody else. But you want your team to scratch and claw and go down with a fight. I think what he was, though, is he's sending a message early. And it's like, hey, we don't have any th we don't have a margin for error. What Brian was talking. We don't have this. Hey, we, we have a history of going on a 10 game heater. And he also said, because I watched a bunch of that game. Demko was the only reason it was too Cobb. Yeah, he was like, great last Philly, night. No kidding. Yeah, Philly was all over them. So, you know, good on Philly for having a, a good home, strong home game. They looked really organized. They looked really determined. 
And Vancouver looked like they were satisfied with beating the Oilers twice. And, hey, we're just going to show up against a team that's expected to rebuild. Bottom feeder team, all of that. And we've got two in the bank already because we made, we beat McDavid and Drysdale. Well, Saddle. and was it – I think O used this description last week. It might have been you, Noodles, that, like, when Philly was playing Ottawa, Ottawa's got to win that game if they show up and work. Like, that's right. Philly right now with John Tortorella. They they don't have talent. They're not – they – they put everything they could at Demko. He stood on his head, but they still only got two past him. Where if you show up and work, you're probably going to beat that team eight times out of ten. And I think Tockett is obviously rattled that that didn't happen yesterday. I didn't catch any of Rick Bonus's post game, but I expect the comments like that from Rick. You know, Rick right. Bonus, man, that that commentary he had after that Vegas series is unlike anything I can ever recall in a coach heading out, of, out for you know summer break. And Pierre Luc Dubois rolls in. Rips one home. The Kings lay a beating on the Jets last night. There were barely 11,000 people in the stands. Like, I, I get the impression there is a lot of panic in Winnipeg. Like, a lot of panic. And I was reading some stuff this morning. Media there saying I, they, haven't, they don't recall the last time they saw that many empty seats. And that's for Dubois coming back. And then he does come back. Yes, he got booed, but he still scored. The Kings laid a beating on him. I don't know. I, I yeah. That's kind of what I was waiting for was Rick Bonus to say, it. "What the hell are we doing here?" You know, and, and right. they got a they they got a con there's concern in Winnipeg because their their season tickets are waning. Um, you know, the, wa the 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 economy is what it is. Inflation is what it is. That that's applying to people across the country, but the tickets are not, you know, crazy in terms of pricing. I believe bottom third in the league. Was that the attendance, Hayes? Like yes, 10,000? Just something? over 11,000, and it looked like that's probably paid seats. Like, that's how many people actually had tickets. I'm telling you, this is a story that's going to really grow over the course of the year. They've already been through it once, and yeah. it's, it's got to be terrifying for some people in Winnipeg. For ownership, I would think Gary Bettman's paying attention. Like, you, 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 you can't, you got to sell tickets. Got to well, get people in the building. You, you do, and and you're right. There's a lot of factors, I'm sure that that you know, the, on the personal side, sure. and all of that. But ultimately, if you're building a winner, you you've got to fill the building. Yes. And and you know what? You need better efforts. I you know watching some of that game, L.A. Um, they looked organized. They looked and Cam Talbot was good, but mm -hmm. on home ice, you've got to get more. And you and. They just didn't do it. I didn't love Hellebuck's game either. I thought he was just okay. Like, they gave up some high-quality chances. But Winnipeg, it wasn't a spirited effort. Like, we talked about yesterday, is somebody going to grab Dubois? Is somebody going to, you know, is there going to be scrums? Is there going to be? And it was the exact opposite. It was just a gentleman's game and kind of, yeah. you know, there. it wasn't like the ugly. There was a fight, though, Like, but it was a bad hit. That Eglin, like, England buried uh, Perfetti from behind. Mm -hmm. It was a, it wasn't a good hit. Yeah, well, uh, bonus has got to be shocked at that too. It's like, okay, you don't want to take Dubois' head off. That's fine. That's cool. But we get pumped, and it's just that's what that is. He that's, must be just. That's my yeah, point, though. Yeah, it's, it's it's like talk it Philly bonus Dubois at home. You're like, we should be rocking tonight. Like, this is a game our you fans think. want us to win right. and want us to perform and have some bite, and it, it didn't appear to happen last night. Um, all right, the Oilers won, so we reached out to Struddy. Jason Strudwick will join us in about 10 minutes. Struddy, I'm sure, <laughs> will be happy. Everyone's happy again. Everyone's rocking. Dry Settle scored. He scored inside 10 minutes, and the Oilers ran away with it. There's a fan duel SGP we hit last night. That one we cruised well, to, man. I, you could turn that off after the I first period. I told you, 20 grand, Dry Settle yeah, scored. Of you, course he did was. Did you see the stat, though? I didn't realize it was that prolific. He has 23 goals in, like, the 12 games he's played it's against outrageous. Nashville. It's outrageous. It's insane. And the amount of power play. Didn't he break a record or something last yeah, night? Yeah, he, he, he broke the Edmonton Oilers power play goal record. That's insane. That that two two records were established last night that I could not believe when I heard. We'll come back and we'll discuss them. The drive settle is one of them. There's another one featuring a defenseman in the Western Conference. We'll tell you about that. The Raptors, you know, they're they're slowly but surely getting through their preseason. They got a win last night. It's the Pascal and Scotty Barnes show. We got Leo Routens coming up in a couple of hours. Leo's take on what Darko's brought to the table, the new coach here in Toronto, his take on what they're saying about the bench and the rotation, Gary Trent coming off the bench. There's some James Harden news. 
There's some Joel Embiid shoe news. We'll tell you oh, about that. My, yeah. I'll never cheer for him again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you about it later this afternoon. And role play level of concern is back and better than ever at four uh, at about five thirty. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN four. Overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Jason Strudwick in a few moments. Our buddy Joe Bowen later this afternoon. He's going into the Ontario Sports Hall of Fame. Long overdue. Bonesy going into the Ontario Sports Hall of Fame. And it's a great inductee list this year. Brendan Shanahan's going in. Jaina Hefford's going in. Wow. Um, I saw a number of great, great Ontario athletes. So more on that with Bonesy. Role play level of concern in about an hour. Um, I referenced... I referenced a couple of stats that were established last night. We'll get to that in just a moment. But also... You know, this Joel Embiid story. Oh. Um, I guess on that front, James Harden just isn't even with Philly anymore. He's what left. going on there? He's just gone to Houston. He's in Houston and he's out of there. Could they make him rot? Well, I haven't been able to determine, like, who's driving this. Like, I, I keep hearing the reporting. It's just the beginning. It's clearly Harden is trying to force his way out. There have been some indications that maybe the Clippers and the Sixers are talking again and it could lead to a trade. Um, but yeah, at some point they're going to have to freeze him out. You know, money's not an issue for this guy though. The guy's made so much money. He's going to make more money. He doesn't care if he gets fined, whatever he's going to get fined or he loses whatever he's going to lose. That's what Kendrick Perkins described that he goes, I just need to let you know, this guy doesn't care Yeah. to the point of over a hundred million in the bank doesn't care. Right. So you want to go ahead and try to screw him over. He doesn't care. He does not care about, you know, the, the one million, two million, five million. Like no. He, let's say he gets fined five million dollars. He's still making like forty the rest of the year. Yeah, he'll pull you that know. out of his couch. Yes. That's his strip club money. Exactly. Seriously. He'll, go, he'll go back to the peeler and be like, I gotta actually take some of that money back. <laughs> I threw a lot in the air last night. I'm gonna need some of that back because I'm not currently in camp and I'm getting fined. But uh Joel Embiid reportedly on his way towards a new sneaker deal with Skechers. Skechers wow. is making its way into the NBA. Love it. Which means it. <laughs> squares cannot be far behind. Squares cannot be far behind. If I see Joel Embiid on the on a on a squares commercial, I'll I'll, I'll cry laughing. <laughs> yes. Because that's next. <laughs> Nick Faldo, Sepp Straka, and Joel Embiid for and squares. J- and Jason Strudwick, I think, wears Skechers too. I could or see squares. that. I could yeah. see squares on the course, and I could I, see Skechers cruising around the West Edmonton Ball. Here's our main man, Jason Strudwick. Are you a, a Skechers guy, Struddy? I've been dab- I've dabbled. I've dabbled in the past. Uh, I, I don't know if I'd want to wear them onto an NBA court, but then again, I can't dunk anymore, so I probably don't get a vote. Yeah, that's true. You're not as athletic as you once were, Struddy. Could you ever dunk? Oh, buddy, all that. I would dunk. I, I, yeah, I, I, I could dunk. I could get up there pretty good. I had some good hops, though. Uh, but now, uh, now I can't quite get up there anymore, right? I'm like Robert Parrish, a little bit beat up. The knees aren't the same anymore. <laughs> yeah. That's a shame. You can still probably lay, lay into a screen or a, a high pick and roll, right, Struddy? I could see you with the elbows up at the YMCA. Right. Well, I played. I played all through high school. It was like poke high. We we'd make it to the final. We'd be up at halftime, then lose. I'd have my stat line was great: six <laughs> points, twenty rebounds, all off my own shots. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's actually that's one of my favorite moves in NBA history. You got to look this up. I'm pretty sure it was Ricky Davis. He was a rebound away from a triple double. So he he ran backwards, shot it off his own backboard, and collected the rebound and thought it was going to no. count. Yes, it happened. I need Viz. It I happened. Need Viz. I'm pretty sure he was in Cleveland. Doogie, get Viz of that. Doogie, cause... find it. He went back. The whole stadium's like, this guy's trying to get a triple-double by shooting on his own basket and collecting that the rebound. That is so greasy. I love that play, though. It's incredibly yeah. selfish. But uh, anyway, needless to say, it didn't, it didn't count. Um, so, Shreddy, we were talking about a couple of stats that were established last night. Leon Dreisaitl has more power play goals than anyone in Edmonton Oilers history. That is what I've been led to believe. I still find that impossible to believe that Gretzky doesn't hold that. Curry, Messier, Anderson, Ryan Smith, whoever it might be. Um, and also, Kale McCarr became the youngest defenseman in NHL history to reach 250 points or the quickest the yeah. least amount of games. Not Bobby Orr, not Paul Coffey, not Ray Bork. 
Like, wh- which stat is more kind of shocking uh, when you hear it today? Well, first off, most guys don't have that many passes completed as McCarr did by the time he gets to that game. So <laughs> right. to get that with points is, is absolutely incredible. But I, 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 I'll be, I'll tell you my honest truth. It's one of my pet peeves when people refer to club records. Like, why do we care what the fastest guy on any team was to get something? I, I just, I don't get it. What McCarr did is incredible. That's league-wide. But I, I challenge you, like, does anyone care who can run the fastest 100-meter dash in Spain or Iceland or, or Jamaica? Like, <laughs> nobody cares. So why are we saying, well, congrats to this guy because he got, he has the most penalty minutes in Washington Capitals history. Who cares? I don't care about that. I want to know league-wide. So I looked it up last night. Leon Dreisaitl is sitting at 98th all-time. Incredible. Incredible. 129 in that short of time. He's going to move up that ladder quick. Number one is Ovi at 299. That's what I'm interested in. I, I, you know, that's like, you know, why are we worried about the guy with the 80th third most points in the NHL? We're not celebrating that. So I get it. It's for people that like the stats. I, it's just not my thing. So I sound a little Debbie down. You're guys, hating on Dreisaitl. This is shocking yeah, to me, Struddy. No, Shocking to me. No, I, it's like when they say, let's celebrate someone's 400th NHL game. Could crash. That's, it, is, it is a truly great thing. But just mention and go on. We don't have to go over his whole accomplishments. It's not like he invaded Russia. Like, it's just be something that's a little bit more meaningful that okay. leads wide. Like when Marlo was challenging for the, the most uh, games of history. That's incredible. Mm. I'm not into club records, guys. I'm sorry. I can't get behind wow. that. I'm well, out. Then, then yeah. what you're saying is Kale McCarr, that's impressive because that is Very the impressive. history of the league. But isn't correct? it the whole, I think the reason for my, um, I'm, I was in awe of that record is the team he plays for is my no point, kidding. Struddy. If this Where's was a Gretzky. Yeah, exactly. Like if it was a Seattle yeah. Kraken record, I'll, I'll give you that. Like, I don't know, <laughs> but it's like Gretzky was there for a long time and dry subtle score more power play goals. That, that is shock. Maybe it's a sign of the times that the refs are just handing out power plays like it's nothing. I mean, that that possibly is the case here. But go ahead. I guess explain why you're more impressed with Kale McCarr uh, hitting 250 points in only 241 games. It's like when I hear people reference the all-time leader for goals for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like, is it over 250? Like, I don't think anyone, like, no one's that excited. No, I mean, that's, I'm not trying to be mean, but let's be honest. But I mean, so honestly, so let's be fair. What McCarr has done is incredible. When I look at the people he's comparing himself to and that list of guys around that, it is incredible. And Kale, I think he's, he has, he's, he has as much separation on the rest of the league for D-men as McDavid does when he, when he is doing the same thing with the puck. Like, I believe there's that much separation. He is so good at what he does, very comfortable defending against anybody. And I think we overlook a little bit his defensive game, um, the way he skates, the way he makes plays. His, you know, the edge work is kind of a buzzword, but the way he uses deception to find open lanes to either skate through or shoot or pass, or whatever, like, he is so good. He's, to me, he's one of the top three must-watch players in the league. Yeah, yep. he's unbelievable. And Colorado, I mean, they're they'll be fine. There's a couple teams that have undefeated to start the season. Vegas is four and Cobb too. Mm-hmm. They're they look like they have just picked up right where they left off. How about your team, Struddy? What did you think of the game last night? I think that this group is is trying to figure out how what they want to be. Like I, I think they've talked a lot about being a good defensive team or improved defensively. Um, you know, last night there was a lot of shots given up. I think it was over forty. Uh, you know, Campbell had to be strong. There's, there's no doubt about it. But, you know, not all those shots were just great point-blank chances. But Campbell did what he needed to when he, when he had to. But I think that they're fighting a little bit as far as, not fighting each other, but fighting this new way of playing because they just want to go so much instead of maybe at times being careful, being, being up off the puck and, and plays like that. So a team like Nashville who, you know, maybe had a bit of an off night, you can rub them out. But against a good team, it's going to be a little bit tougher. So, I, I think we might see the owners kind of um, not not struggle, but just kind of as they're trying to find a more a, a balance between you know offensive hockey, which are really good, and defensive hockey. Try to figure out that. I think we might see them wobble a little bit here and there. And I would give them almost a 40, 40, 40 41 games to figure that out. Mm. Strutty, do you think Canadian markets kind of welcome a road trip more than? other markets like if you're getting dummied at home like let's just get the hell out of here <laughs> either get to philly or get to nashville or get to la and it's not like the people aren't going to follow you there but it just seems like let's just get out of here and, and it'll quiet down and let's just go play some hockey 
Well, I think that first road trip as a group is really fun. You know, you, you know, the team donors haven't changed that much, but there are new players. So you get to have that, that some time together. You know, what I, I don't really miss playing the game and scoring all those goals. What I do miss is kind of being <laughs> with my buddies on the road and going for dinner and hanging out. Like, that's what I really, I love that. I love that part of it. You know, and you just, you walk into lobby after, you know, before uh, you get your, your hotel, you're like, hey, six o'clock in the lobby. And everyone wheels down there, you just go for dinner. Like, I love that. And that's how you get to know guys. So I think that that first road trip's really important for any group. You know, I don't count one game as a road trip. I think it's got to be two or, or more games. I mean, three or four is perfect. You start getting to that five, there. That's, that's a bit long, but uh, I think it's important early guys to get on the, out on the road and get to know each other. You take it for granted a little bit. Like you just think of, the, like you said, Struddy, the great dinners on the road, like seven oh. o'clock, Abe and Louis Boston dinner. Like uh, it's just all around North America. Like you kind of, while you're in it, you're just like, well, I got to go for dinner now. I'm in Boston. But looking back <laughs> on it, <laughs> it's pretty, it's a pretty damn cool gig. And I guess you just take it for granted. Well, yeah, now, like, every night, every Tuesday night, I look forward to Taco Tuesday in our house. <laughs> that's a long <laughs> Are we going mild or hot salsa today, guys? You know, like, that's, kind of the extent, that's the extent of the excitement. But it's a little different phase of my life with the kids. But, uh, yeah, and just that, that quality time, right? You know, then you go for dinner, then maybe you play a game to see who buys after, you know, like the credit card game or boards in the bush, like, and that excitement that brings guys together. The next morning you're talking about how this guy won or lost or whatever. Like I, I just, I, that is what brings groups together. And it's, you know, people talk a lot about team building. They go out into the forest, like and try to figure things out. But I think a lot of that can be done <laughs> together forest? by yourselves working on it. Wow. But I, you know, the, the thing that I looked forward to the most on the road too, was those meals but there was a transition too, where nutrition came into it. I remember having a big argument in the lobby because I wanted to go to Lowry Steakhouse in Chicago, and our captain, who is one of our friends, I'll just I won't name him, Jerome McGinley, mm -hmm. was like, no, "There's too much, too much salt in that meat." Like it was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm like, what's going on here? Like I just want to go for some mashed potatoes, some cream corn. They serve it table side. And I'm fired up about it. It's like, no, no, we got to go for sushi because it's healthier and stuff. Like, I don't know when it crossed over. But I that would was say you do you. That's you, disappointing. I, no, That's I was disappointing. so rattled. You so rattled. That. You cannot yeah. have it. No, cannot but, have it. Oh, well. Well, yeah, I, I, you know, you guys were living in different worlds, man. I remember when I came home from school, I got my first gig. Barely making any money. We played the credit card game, and it was panic-inducing. <laughs> and that was at, like, you know, that was at Boston Pizza. The, it was, like, $89. I'm like, please don't come up. Please don't come up. Totally different world than what you guys would have been doing back when you were in your early to mid-20s. Well, you just set up so the rookies would lose, right? Like, the guy who just got called up, you know, and he'd have any intention to buy his supper, but we'd always set it up so, like, whatever. Damien kind of was just called up, but we'd set it up so he'd lose. And the bill would be like 500 bucks, and he'd, it, he would just go white. <laughs> you know, just die. He'd be so rattled. And then he'd be like, oh, we're buying your dinner. Oh, my God. Like, he'd be so relieved. You know? He'd call his wife, and he had $500 left. All the money he made today was gone. i paying for these old guys' dinner. Right. It's sickening. Guy comes out. He's got a credit limit of like 2500 Canadian. He's like, how am I going to pay for this? Man, we're in New York. Like, this just is not going to work. Oh, that's so true. Um, with Jason Strudwick. So, Strudy, we were joking about um, Rick Tockett already disliking some of his team. They're 2-1 and one on the season. And he really was not happy with, with the effort of some guys. And he didn't want to use the word soft, but he happened to get there. He found a way to get to the word soft. And I'm curious how, if you were on that team, you might react game four. Is that got to fight, got to throw hits, snapping in practice? Like, how, how does the modern athlete re re react to those comments compared to maybe what someone would react to if it was 1997? Oh, back then, you just heard it every day. Even when you won, you were soft. They were just giving it to you all the time. Um, but, you know, I watched, I watched the, the three games the Cox have played, and, um, you know, I, I think the first two games, they, they, the owners were really, I thought they were quite, they weren't competitive, especially the first game. The second game was more competitive. Um, but I think it's maybe a little early to throw that card on the table, right? That we have to be harder to play against. You know, you're two and one, um, but I don't, I don't, don't think he wants the standard to dip or he doesn't want any, any softness in that standard. So I think he's really pushing these guys to, to get out of their comfort zone. 
uh, because in the past they have, you know, the last couple of years they've had a really tough start. So he wants to make sure he's on them and keep them going. But I think game three is probably six or seven games early to be pulling that card out. Yeah, it's a quick one. Yeah, I agree. It's a quick one. He Very was so quick. rattled, though. But O made a good point. If it was Philly, maybe he doesn't pull that card out. But guaranteed, he walks into that building and he's had some tough nights and, and you know, really fought his way out of that building. May have, so, he might have run into an usher was like, hey, talk, man, I, li- I miss you. Like, you know, I miss the old days. And then he watches his team float around out That's there. So exactly it might have hit a nerve, what it was. Right? He was embarrassed. He's like, I'm Rick Tockett, and I used to just dominate this barn and kill people for fun. And I had to watch that. No, thanks. <laughs> no thanks. I, so I, I played against Talk and he was one of my him and Wendell Clark were my favorites. So I line up, he's playing in Arizona, I'm lined up against him. We're battling all night. And anyways, I I lean over and I said, Buddy, you look tired. And he gets really upset. I'm like, What's this guy's problem? I just said he looked tired. So the rest of the game now we're battling like crazy. I'm like, I might have to fight the rocket talk it. Like he's one of my idols. <laughs> so Nothing happened. But what did you know, Let me just back it up. Like, yeah. what did that mean, yeah. though? You look tired. Well, I, like, I was kind of chirping. I'm saying, like, old oh, man, you look tired, right? Like, you look oh, tired. Oh, my. Like, oh, bad, like, right? like, I wasn't the greatest trash talker. I'm not Larry Bird, but I was kind of, in my way, chirping him. So, anyways, he was really upset. I'm like, God, I, I really got to this guy. Like, I don't think I'm even that witty. <laughs> So after the game, Shane Doan comes out. He's like, why did you say to talk? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, why would you tell him it's time to retire? I'm like, I didn't. I said he looks tired. And he's like, he hates you. He's so mad at you. I'm like, oh, my God, bring talking. Why are you mad at me? You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, your mouth guard was too big. It must have. <laughs> you, you, you told him to retire. That's what but he the thing heard, is, eh? Strutty, if you said you should retire, you old yeah. whatever, why didn't – like if he thought you said that, why didn't he kill you? I thought he would have killed know. you for that. I agree. I felt sick about it. Like, I honestly, like I – you know, you want to compete against your idols, but you don't want to like – I never would – like run over Wayne Gretzky, not that I really had a chance, but you know what I mean? Like these guys, these are guys that kind of paved the way. If you play hard against them, but you don't want to disrespect them. So I'd never say that to Wendell Clark or Rick Tucker. Like I love those guys. And then for him, he, to this day, he probably says, I hate that Strudwick, that bald guy. I can't stand him. Like I always talk to the Canucks are the greatest. Any team he's coaching, they're the greatest. Cause I feel like I own for thinking he thinks I said to retire. I never said that to the Rocket. Yeah, that can't happen. That is very disrespectful if that's how it was interpreted. I mean, no one wants to hear that, let alone Rick Tockett. Yeah, yeah. that's um, – yeah. we had him on last year. Remember, maybe it was a couple years ago, we were talking about his fight with Wendell Clark at, at the Gardens, and it's a great fight. you got to find it on YouTube. Like, Clark's <laughs> Clark crush – I think it's Mark Howe. He just destroys Mark Howe, and Tockett's gloves are off at, like, the red line. And he's chasing him into the corner. Clark's gloves are off, and they just go toe to toe in the corner. And Tockett told the story. Speaking about going out for dinner, he's like, because he's a Scarborough kid, he's from Toronto, and he, I guess he was here. It was like a Saturday night game, and the night before he was out with his buddies, and they were all like, "Man, Clark, Clark, Clark," because it was '85. I think it was Wendell's rookie year. And his buddies were like, "You gotta fight Clark. You gotta fight Clark." He's like, "All right, I'll fight him." And I guess it materialized. <laughs> like, how insane is that? that? That's dinner conversation. You have to fight this guy tomorrow night. And it happened. You got to find a strutty. It's a great tilt. Two monsters. Yeah. Two monsters. Yeah. Just all competitive guys, right? It's just, it, and those guys, like, you just, you don't see those guys come around really at all anymore, right? It's, it's changing. Yeah, well, that's what we were talking about last week, right? It's like the power forward that fights, like Tockett. Clark, Iginla, Shanahan, you know, uh, Kachuk, like the, the original Kachuk, not that these guys won't fight now, the modern day Kachuks, but guys who would score 500 goals and have, you know, 35 fights in their career and fight like other star players. It never happens. <laughs> never happens. No. No, it, it was crazy. Like, I remember when Iginla fought Le Cavalier in the, in the finals. Mm-hmm. Like, to see those two leaders go at it, like, it's just, it was, you know, can you imagine being on that bench and how, you know, just be so fired up to see that happen. And I think that run, I think again, Lafat, Darren Hatcher, didn't he? I think noodles maybe again, yeah. like he just, he just competitive so much that you want to take any advantage you can on the other team. Like it's just, it's incredible to watch. Now the game's changed and, you know, but it's still, those were pretty, pretty intense days. That's for sure. Absolutely. If, you, if you look at that Hatcher again, fight, they both take 
like wood chopping chops at each other, the back of each other's legs. <laughs> <laughs> like they're five minute majors just for slashing there. And then they decide to drop the gloves. Like I can't remember. I think it was Hatcher that chopped Jerome and then Jerome <laughs> chopped him back and they went at it. That was a serious, serious fight. Those guys, though, gentlemen, they had a sneaky like need for that. Like I, I played with Shanahan, too, and it would be like four one winning. And it's like, let's get out of here. No harm, no yeah. foul. And then all of a sudden, they just start teeing off on somebody. I think once every 10 games, they need <laughs> yeah. to get it out of their system. I don't know what they were. It's, I, I love the old grudge. It's like, two years ago, that guy slashed me. And it's like, <laughs> really? You got to beat his brains in? <laughs> I, lo I love that one. Like the old Pat Quinn Pat grudge. Pat Quinn it's is like, I waited <laughs> 10 years, but I got it. <laughs> he got him. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was like Stan Makita. Yeah, too. He's he's like, I waited. Makita. Ten years for Stan Makita, but I got him. <laughs> I think he said Stan like like chopped him over the face or something yeah. too. Like it was a serious infraction. Yeah. He made old Stan think he forgot about yeah. it. He did not. No, he had, he had not. It was another decade, but he had not yeah. forgotten. All right, Struddy. Thank you, buddy. We'll do it again soon. Go Oilers. Okay, yeah, we'll talk to you guys later. All right, there's Jason Strudwick. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, it might have been more than that. I feel it like was 15. Wasn't it? I think he say it was 15. like 15. I've been waiting 15 years to fight that guy. <laughs> I was like, what? Was All I want one. the rest of the show is I need the guy from Cleveland, the viz of going backwards off the backboard. <laughs> we have it. We have it. All right. This is Ricky Davis. Oh, my Ricky God. Davis. This is real. I'll never forget this. He was a rebound short of a triple double. He was playing for Cleveland. Roll the tape up on TSN 4. That's his own. He goes, up, oh, miss, I'll take that. <laughs> Triple double. <laughs> With three seconds left, it's 120-96. They're beating uh -oh. Utah. And he's he was a, a rebound short of a triple double on an inbound. Look at Jerry Sloan. He's like, did that just Jerry happen? Jerry Sloan is like, is that guy for real? He needed that? Yep. Look he at this. He would have took some grief, man. Just a miss, and I'll take that. Ricky Davis triple double. Put it on the board. They should have rescinded the whole stat line. For that he should have yeah. lost every single stat zeros across the board oh, that, that is, is so insane. funny isn't that incredible isn't that incredible ricky davis pure talent <laughs> and just had no idea like basketball iq he was a high school guy and wow. uh i haven't seen a shot at jerry jerry sloan looked like he had been you know coaching the jazz for about 40 years at that point he probably had been i guess but man, um oh, man. yeah that's old school man <laughs> ricky davis cleveland when they were brutal that was before LeBron. That would have been probably late '90s, I guess, early 2000s. So Dude, funny. that guy. Yeah. If that, if that, that, I don't think there was social media back on that clip. If he did that now, I, he would never live that down. No, it's crazy. They're crazy. It is. Um, <laughs> speaking of social media, LeBron and LeBron, he had a really kind of strange Instagram story earlier today. We'll, we'll tell you about it. We'll get into it. Joe Bowen still to come. Role play level of concern in about 45 minutes. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, Joe Bowen coming up. Role play level of concern coming up as well. So, you know, I referenced LeBron, and LeBron's got a massive following. One of the more well-known, popular people on earth. Massive following on Instagram. What has he got, 158 million followers or something like yeah. that? But sometimes I lose sight of it because, like, I always think of LeBron for some reason as being so much younger than I am, but he's not. He's almost 40. Like, yep. he's, he's not a young man. He's not, he's not 18. He's not 20. He's not in his mid-20s. He's middle-aged with many kids and, like, teenage kids. And he posted on Instagram stories this morning. We can post it up on TSN4. Wow, that felt too real. My stomach hurts now. Hashtag my dream. Like that was that was the post. There it is up on TSN four. <laughs> and when I saw that today, I'm like, this is this guy's almost forty. Like what I don't get the social media content that LeBron will post at times. And I don't know, maybe it's not meant for me, but I just well, don't understand. I don't what? know what that means. I, I really don't know what that means. That is something to do with some type of artificial intelligence. Or some kind of goggles. I I have no idea, but there's something behind it. You think like it's he, a precursor to something that he's he's promoting in the future yes, or something like some that? Yes, there's some type I of see. product where it's okay. like either laughing or artificial something. 
and then it's like it's going to be hashtag my dreams. He's not going to blurt that out without explaining it to the world. There's a motive behind yeah. that. Well, that it's, would that might make sense because he is a great. He's a businessman. He's he's worth billions of dollars yes and i guess that's my point like there has to be something deeper than that because that's a comment that i would expect like my nephew to post you know and right. be like what the hell is that like you're you're yeah why would hurts? you want to post something where no one on earth knows what the hell you're talking <laughs> <Exactly>. about <laughs> about your dreams like what are we talking about here lebron come on man we need more it's details weird. it is i weird. guarantee more detail. that's some technical high I don't know what, dude, but it's just some high profile, <laughs> high profile like, stuff, artificial. I don't know, man. What yeah. could it be like I some type of I goggles where it's like real okay. life? I don't know. I man. don't know what he's got going on, but something's going on with LeBron. Something because now he's wow. getting into the gambling game. You guys noticed that he's been posting. He's trying to pick winners in the NFL every week and something's going on there too. I'm like, all right, where, where's this going? Like, who are you connecting to? Who, wow. who you know, there's always a motive and guarantee that's not just him. He has a social media team. I know mm. that for a fact. So that should that level of profile when you think. But his agent yeah. says he's the first guy that's had to deal with 365 day attention, mm -hmm. and yet all of it he brings on himself. All of it. Well, again, there's there's nothing nefarious about the the story. It's not like I just I I saw it. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Like, did he wake up and just think this is a post that I think a lot of people are going to love to see? Well, might be. Maybe it is. Hey, you got us talking. Maybe <laughs> exactly. maybe we're falling right into the LeBron trap, right? Business yeah. 101 by LeBron. It very well could be the case. All right, Joe Bowen coming up. Role play level of concern. Leo Routens on the Raptor game last night. Raptors through camp and a number of NBA stories. And the Phillies, man. Man, the Phillies look good again last night. Whew. Game three of the ALCS tonight. We'll get to that as well. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4.